Hey guys, today we have a Regal VB1032 VSWR bridge to take a look at. This is a device that goes with a spectrum analyzer to allow you to make uh, very precise SWR measurements of a device, an antenna typically. So the package came from Regal, obviously it was in a box, it's got this super nice case. And if we open it up inside, we find some documentation and the actual uh, bridge itself, the actual VB1032 device. So this device, as you can see, is very well made. This is very solid aluminum. Um, I assume there's some screws possibly underneath this sticker, um, but I'm not going to take this thing apart because it costs uh, a chunk of change. As a matter of fact, I can just barely see some screw holes underneath the sticker and I'm not going to remove it because new and shiny, we're going to keep this sticker like it is. This device has N type connectors on all three connections on this. This is the input. This would come from your spectrum analyzer's tracking generator. Uh, this is our output. This goes to the spectrum analyzer's RF input section. And then this is our DUT or our device under test. And again, all three of these are type N connectors. This comes with two double male end to end connectors. The spectrum analyzer itself uses end connectors on the chassis. And then whatever device you're going to hook to, uh, you're going to have to connect it up with a type N or you're going to have to get an adapter. Um, I wish I didn't have to, but I don't have any antennas that use type N connectors. It came with a small product overview sheet. Um, I'm not going to read all this. It just tells you what I just told you how to hook it up. Um, this measures the S11 related parameters. So uh, filters, amplifiers, mixers, anything that resonant frequencies or, or excuse me, resonant frequencies and VSWR tests of an antenna. So anything you can do with a nano VNA that uses the S11 port you can do with this on a spectrum analyzer. The frequency range on this is 1 megahertz to 3.2 gigahertz. This does not have the complete range of um, my spectrum analyzer. It's 9 kilohertz to 3 gigahertz. But for anything we're going to do as amateur radio operators, this is, covers the entire ham band range. As I said, in type connectors, it is 50 ohms impedance. There is some insertion loss uh, between the input and the DUT, uh, less than 10 dB typical insertion loss. Um, it gives some other specs here that I'm not going to bother reading to everyone. Um, half watt uh, maximum input power on this device. And since we're running this from the spectrum analyzer itself, that's fine. We'll be well within spec. Um, dimensions, weight, and uh, you know it's a little chonky it's about 0.2 kilos so that is uh, bigger than a quarter pounder possibly bigger than an impossible whopper just saying and then on the back we have directions in Chinese and again this is the VB 1032 SWR bridge the other thing I wanted to mention and I haven't opened this piece up yet I have an eval key when you by a spectrum analyzer there are some functions that are native to the to the SA itself and there are some functions that are an extra add-on key license key you have to purchase an SWR bridge is an extra add-on license key now you don't have to use a Regal SWR bridge any SWR bridge would work as long as it's wired correctly I've played around with a cheap one I bought and um, I don't believe it was actually wired correctly. It didn't seem to be giving me the results I expected to see. Um, so I actually went out and spent the money and bought a real um, certified, lab tested, you know, Regal SWR bridge. And the reason I mention all that, when you buy this, this comes with the software key. I had a eval key I got from Regal when I bought the spectrum analyzer and that's what I've been using. It has like a 40 hour lifespan. Um, this is a permanent key that comes with this so I can put this into the spectrum analyzer and I'll be able to use it forever. Um, 
it is not cheap. Um, if anybody's interested, drop me a message in, in the Toads Discord and I'll, I'll tell you how much it costs. Uh, this is a tool, though, that I'm going to use over and over as an amateur radio guy. Um, a lot of the functions that I can do with this, you can do with a tiny SA. A lot of that functionality is built into a tiny SA. Um, but a tiny SA is a $50 instrument, $80, whatever one of those things runs. Um, this is a precision instrument here to go with my spectrum analyzer, which is another precision instrument. So, anyway, this uh, will connect up straight to the chassis of the spectrum analyzer, and I'm going to go uh, hook all that up and we'll take a look at it. Okay guys, so I've got the, tra uh, the SWR bridge hooked up to the spectrum analyzer. This is it right here. Um, it's open. We, we'll have to do a calibration before we start doing any testing. So I'm going to walk through quickly the steps we have to do to make our measurements. And I have a generic 2 meter antenna in my stash of random things in the shop, so that's what we're going to test with. Um, this test could use an HF antenna, this can use 2 meter, 440, whatever. Uh, anything that's within the range of our SWR bridge. And I just happen to have a 2 meter antenna handy enough to test with right now without moving a bunch of wires. <coughs> Excuse me. So what we want to do first is we want to turn on the tracking generator and we're going to turn it on. And as you can see there's no signal. We're coming out, we're going straight back in, and that's what we've got. And the next thing I want to do is I want to set my frequencies. I've already set these to look at 2 meter and 440, and I have the span already set. There's no sense in watching me twiddle a whole bunch of knobs. So those things are already set. Our, uh, our span, like I said, is set. We have about a 636 megahertz span to cover slightly below 2 meters and slightly above 70 centimeters and you'll see that in a second. We're on a linear scale. We, we may play with that and change that to logarithmic, but right now I've got it on linear. All right. <clears throat> so the tracking generator is enabled. The next thing we want to do is go to measurement. And you can see here we have VSWR. Let me zoom in on the screen just a little bit closer. You don't necessarily need to see my hand, but I do want you to see the screen. So we're going to turn on the VSWR function of the spectrum analyzer and then we're going to go to measurement setup and the first thing we have to do here is calibrate open so there's no antenna hooked up to the SWR bridge so I'm going to hit cal open and now we have our open calibration and that's the only calibration required for this test so the next thing I need to do is hook our antenna up and let me fasten it in here and amazingly, I found a 2 meter antenna with an N type connector on it, so I didn't even have to go adapter crazy. <clears throat> Certain of you out there, Ape, I'm looking at you, make fun of me for my use of adapters. All right, so we, <laughs> we've got it connected. <clears throat> so the next thing we want to do is we want to hit uh, VSWR, and this will give us our readings. And there we go. So, now I'm going to set some markers on here so we can see what we're looking at. Uh, we have up to four markers to mark a position. So marker one right now is set in some oddball place and I'm going to scooch it down to two meter area. And you can see we're getting our best SWR here at 158.7. Now let me point out something before I go any further. What you're looking at here is the green line is return loss on this uh, setup, and the yellow line is our SWR curve, what you're normally used to looking at with a rig expert or a nano VNA or whatever. So that's our SWR curve. The purple line is our reference line. So we can see that our return loss is 20, uh, around 19 to 20 dB down. And our marker is at the best SWR reading, but I'm going to scoot this down into actual where the 2 meter area is at. And we'll, we'll set that marker for 146.52 megahertz. 
So there's our marker, and you should be able to see that on the screen. All right, now I want to set another marker, so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to tell it to go to marker 2. I'm going to turn marker 2 on, and then we're going to set marker 2. And this is going to be up toward the 70 centimeter range. Now, at this point, our best SWR on this is at 427, 428 megahertz which is uh, not very good for a 2 meter, 70 centimeter antenna, is it? Let me move this on up. And we'll go to 443 and some change. So you can look down here and you can see the SWRs that we're reading for those two marker positions, marker 1 and marker 2. Uh, there's the frequencies that we have the marker set on. The frequency is our x-axis, of course. Amplitude is our vertical axis. This is our return loss, so this is our green line where the marker is. And then our reflection coefficient and our SWR for those two spots that I've got marked on the, uh, on the trace. Now, <clears throat> this is a 2 meter antenna that's magnet mounted. It is not on a very good ground plane. It is on a pie pan I might have swiped out of the kitchen, please don't tell Julie. So we don't have an outstanding ground plane and that affects how this antenna works. I'm going to grab the antenna and pull it off of the uh, makeshift ground plane. And you can see I'm holding the antenna by the cable right now that that changes what our trace looks like completely differently. You still, you still see our markers, marker 1 and marker 2, but this is definitely not a very effective antenna without an adequate ground plane. And even me holding it with hand and moving my hand around changes the return loss and changes our SWR. And keep in mind that return loss and SWR are inversely proportional. Higher return loss is lower SWR and vice versa. So now if I put it back on a ground plane and that's the side of my toolbox as opposed to my my ham pie pan, uh, that does change our change our um, markers a little bit too. So you can see that actually moved uh, marker 1 more into the juicy spot, I mean excuse me, marker 1 more into the juicy spot for 2 meters uh, at 146.52 and we're now reading a 1.7 SWR and marker 2 which is the 70 centimeter marker is reading 1.7 at 443 still not the best it could be here we'd really want that peak to be more in the butter zone but this is usable and on VHF and UHF it, it's gonna it's gonna work and again keep in mind that the ground plane means everything this is your radials on an HF antenna and the same thing goes with a 2 meter mobile antenna mounted on your vehicle you have to have a ground plane the signal has to have something to push against so without that it changes the way everything works. Now there's a few other things we can do to look at our signal if we wanted to change this. We can zoom in on the span and narrow down our span and get a closer look and zoom back out. We could do the whole range of the spectrum analyzer but I'm, I'm not going to do any of that. We of course can change our frequency ranges, our start and our stop, and our span we're looking on a two meter antenna so it's kind of pointless to go somewhere else uh, we can modify our amplitude levels I have it set at 20 dBm that's where I'm leaving it for now <clears throat> and there's offsets we can change we can add more markers if we were doing an HF antenna for example and looking at two or three different bands we could put up to four markers one on each band uh, just as an example alright and that um, that basically covers the use of an SWR bridge. Guys, I appreciate you watching. Take a minute and hit that thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already, please. A lot of you guys watch these videos and are not even subscribed. It's free and it'll make you happy. And uh, make sure you ring that bell so you know when I post new content to YouTube. Thanks, fellas. 73.